Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the Mavic Air 2. I'm at the park. It's a windy day today. Took some of your guys' advice and check it out. I put up a little handkerchief windsock on one of those little bamboo skewers just to kind of let you know how windy it is. Google actually says it's uh, 22 miles per hour, but this spot is always windier because there's kind of like a channel coming in so it's super windy probably gonna be getting up to like 30 miles per hour and we're just really gonna see how it handles it we're gonna try some advanced tracking and see how stable that video is if you remember I did the mini here in this exact spot go ahead and check up there see the video of the mini handling the same wind in the same area imagine this is gonna do a little bit better so let's get started with the Mavic Air 2 high wind test let's see how it does We're gonna shoot guys today, uh, not in HDR, not in 4K 30, but we're gonna try a 4K 60, okay? And this should make it a little more fluid when you're turning and stuff. Anyway, we've got 20 satellites here, unbelievable. So great day for GPS. Now the wind's like blasting right now. I don't know if you guys can hear that in the mic, but look at that flag. <laughs> Maybe I'll let it settle down for a sec before I launch. It's gotta be about 25, 30 right there on that gust anyway i'm going to press auto launch and we're just going to take off by holding right in here recording my screen so you guys can see this and i'm going to start recording right away i just tap record and we're just going to let it hover there for a second there should be no excuse man this thing has 20 satellites so that time it pushed it back a little but look how it's kind of pulling back i launched right in the middle of that h so it's kind of pulling back, it's trying. And you can see it fighting that about 20, 25, 30, 35 gusts probably. She put the lime in the cook and now she drank and pull up. She put the lime in the cook and now she drank and drank and pull up. She put the lime in the cook and now she drank and pull up. She put the lime in the cook and now she got it done. They cook and not stop her. Thinking up and I can take a set of her. Keep his belly, leave his take a set of her. Thinking up and I can take a set of her. There's a gust right there. So let's just see how it handles the wind. And we're also going to check the flight time, right? This thing, whoa, there's a gust. Honestly, that's like 30. Okay, it backed up and it's getting back. Let's just, to give it the benefit of the doubt, we'll go up slowly so it can look at that launch pad with its bottom cameras and sensors. And I'm gonna go up to 30 feet, just maybe 31, 32, so there's no doubt in high, how high I'm going to let this thing do as much as it needs to have a precision return. Okay, so it's up there, just hovering. I'm gonna give it a few more seconds. And it's gonna be windier up there, right? So right there, it's probably like a few miles an hour windier. It's doing pretty good. Now let's go ahead and do some shots. So I think that's enough time hovering over the launch pad. Let's fly forward. You really hear that wind cutting through the propellers, but it seems to be doing fine. And remember, this is um, 60 frames per second. So let's do a pan shot, and you'll be able to look at the video. If you ever do decide to use um, 60 FPS video, this will be a good indication of what you can expect, right? So if you look at my other videos, I usually shoot in 4K 30 and go ahead and check out the difference because this should be a lot more fluid like i was saying enough of that <laughs> all right so what do we want to do we want to just go let's just go forward i'm going to go up and book it right into the wind and see how fast we can go wow it's blowing it back a little definitely better than the mini but full stick forward this is in normal mode right guys So let's just see, right into like 20, 30 mile per hour winds. And it's only able to go like 15. The gimbal just kind of adjusted itself. 
Look at that. So see how the wind died down over there a little higher? Now remember, this is in a, like a neighborhood. See this? Whoa, we just hit gnarly gust of wind there. Obstacle detection unavailable. It's saying up on the screen. Look at that. Max power load. Fly with caution. And it keeps saying obstacle detection unavailable. So apparently the wind is giving it all these errors. I'm full stick forward. And look at this, guys. I went down to like 2 miles per hour. Fluctuating between like 5 and 15. Yeah, so that means there's a pretty dang good breeze here. We're already at 76% power. I'm going to let it off. And let's just come back, okay? I'm going to pull full stick back. We'll just get kind of a backward shot. Maybe I'll rotate the camera down. I want, don't want to go over too many houses. You know, doing this. Should be back in the park now, yeah. So we'll just come full on back. Just get a downward shot. Check out that um, 60 frames per second, 4K. Downward shot, full on back. Now we're gonna let off. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. A quick, wow, it doesn't like the wind and not having the sensors on. Cause I don't remember that thing keep popping up when I was doing that range test the other day. If you guys missed that range test, go ahead and check out that. It'll, it'll be in the description and on the right of the screen pop up too if you want to check out my uh, range test let's just pan over to the left and remember we're looking at the video quality in this crazy wind we're at 214 feet high so it's going to be pretty windy up there and um, let's see how it is to rotate that gimbal side to side remember we discovered this use it a little more in the last video you just hold the screen and then you can move your finger to the right or the left. You're going to see the motor and the propeller eventually. Look at that. That's as far away as it can go. Now this is sideways on the wind. The wind's hitting it from the right side. So I'm panned to the right side. There's the propeller and the arm. Let's pan over. Whoops. I was just like track, trying to track something. Let's pan over to the left side. And look at that. So I'm at the same horizontal level. And you see how the other side, the left side of the drone is way higher, right? That's such a cool feature. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, but it really allows you to be in one direction. I'm going to go back to zero. I haven't really figured out how to um, get this back to zero without touching the screen again and moving the gimbal. I want to be at L0. There's our strong wind warning. It finally came up, huh? Wow. It's really coming up now. It's buzz buzzing on me and everything. I'm gonna turn off my, put myself in airplane mode so I don't get all these notifications. All right, strong wind warning, guys. Okay, I'm gonna pitch the camera all the, it's really buzzing at me right now. It keeps buzzing at me on the controller. Wow, just look at that flag with my hat cam. It's gotta be 25, 30 down here. Look at that thing. It's just blowing. So here's what we'll do. We'll just do some free tracking. We're burning up power pretty quick. <clears throat> We're pretty high up here, so it's gotta be like 30 up there. So definitely gonna be better than the Mavic Mini if you're in a windy area. Even though this strong wind keeps beeping at me and let's see if we can dismiss this. There we go, I just like swiped it away. But we still have the warning up there. So the, the controller's not vibrating any, anymore since I swiped that away. And let me just try to draw a box on the screen. Okay, look at that. We cannot uh, do any kind of spotlight when we're recording in high frames per second, which is 60. So I'm gonna stop that. I'm gonna go back into, let's go into HDR. This will give us a really nice shot of 4K. Start recording again. And let's try to do this like spotlight free tracking right in here in this high wind. So you see that? So we can either rotate, if I was to rotate the stick to the right right now, it should keep it in view, yeah. So I'm gonna do like a slow rotation. And it looks like it kind of lost track of the skate park and it's resorting to its 
GPS tag, I guess, it um, put on the skate park. That's kind of interesting, huh? I'm just going to leave it and keep rotating it. Now I'm going to pull push, I'm going to push, sorry, full to the right. Really keep an eye on this video, guys. And I'm just manually orbiting after drawing a box around this object. Man, it's really blowing. It's got to be 25, 30. So this drone can handle it, no problem. This is like up in the Mavic 2 Pro territory of wind handling. Probably not quite as much, but very darn close. Because look at this. Really inspect that video. We've done one full revolution at full stick to the side. And I'm really not seeing any jitter in my FPV, but I will have that up. I'm gonna let off. Let's see how it deals with that. I'm gonna push to the left now. Let's go the other direction. Okay. And while we're doing this, I'm gonna start to pull back a little. Now this is gonna get pretty high up in the wind up there. So I'm gonna wait till we're, we got the wind to our backs before I do that. Full stick to the left as far as the roll. And I'm gonna start pushing up and pulling back. So extreme winds, let's see what we can get, guys. Extreme winds. Still pushing full stick to the left and it seemed to kinda of wanna slow down a bit. Yeah, it's having some trouble up there. Woo! What are we, 321 feet in this crazy wind, so. Yes, I know some of you are gonna say that's kind of reckless, but I'm confident in this thing. If it did start wandering, I'd pull it down quick in the park here. Come down and, and bring it uh, closer. Still full stick to the left. A Little bit of a jitter there. You see that UPS or GPS point moving around. So that's probably like the camera, like, you know, maybe the drone wobbling around and just really trying to track that. Let's see what happens if we stop letting off the stick fully. Let's see how it slows down and smooths all that out. I'm gonna click again on the skate park and try to get that whole thing in view. Let's see if it loses that again, if we get kind of the whole contrast of the skate park, okay? Let's just see what happens. I'm gonna rotate it to the right this time. And let's see if it uh, does that same thing. Yep. So for some reason, with at least the HDR mode on, it's kind of losing the shape of that in its digital tracking. Maybe by default, it um, goes into this mode when you get this far away. Maybe that's like a default feature where it just, you know what I mean, triangulates, takes the park's GPS point, and it just tries to keep that in view. Which isn't bad if that's what it does. That's far and beyond a lot of the drones out today. Okay, so we're gonna keep doing this. We're gonna come forward and down. And we're just gonna do a little bit more flying. We're at 30% power, right? So we're getting close. And I'm gonna just tighten up this circle a little bit and go sideways again. Looks like it was rotating the camera down a little bit. These guys are skating here. We're just going to check them out. Okay. As fast as we can in normal mode. Okay. So some cool skate park footage. And then let's do a return to home. I'm going to let off here. It's right above me. And let's get out of this. So to get out, we're gonna press this I, and that just completely shuts off that, they call it spotlight mode. If you don't wanna do any other kind of tracking and just do it manually, you just do that, okay? Remember, just draw a box around whatever you wanna track right when you're just recording, and there you go. Move the sticks around and it will track it. And it does a great job. Remember, you can do these other things over to the left. Okay, that can only do people in vehicles. So it sees that's a skate park, and so we cannot do the follow modes on these kind of objects. It's only saying people in vehicles, so it's smart like that. And then we can do this um, circle tracking if you just wanted a designated speed. All right, so pressing the eye again, totally get out of that. And let's bring the camera up, and let's just do a beeline to that other park over there. 
So we're going to go upwind. Full stick forward, guys. Let's switch into sport. We're going 15. Canceling the return to home. Now I'm in sport. Let's see if we can go any faster. Wow, it's super windy over here. Only can go like 10, 11. All right. Going back into normal. And let's just do a return to home. So holding in return to home. Clicking on that air warning again. And here we go. So it's going to go up a bit and come home. 15% power left. And let's see how it lands right on this mat, okay, in this wind. It's still fluctuating between 20 and it seems 30 down here. I'm going to pitch the camera down so I can see where it is. It's coming down. It's just coming down kind of slow. Wow. For some reason, I have the return to home at... Geez, at like 300 feet? I don't know why I did that. Well, we went kind of into the low battery warning, so hopefully that doesn't really affect the uh, return to home. It shouldn't. I mean, it still has 11%. You know what? Bad on me. I turned off those sensors. So we'll do another one. I have another battery. I want to do one more. We'll just see how close it lands with all the sensors off. This is only its GPS. Sorry about that. Space that out. Ooh, that was a strange gust. We'll just let it land where it thinks the GPS is the best. It looks like about right there. Man, that wind is just going. So if you have all these sensors off, check that out, guys. I'm gonna stop recording. Check this out. If you're only using the GPS, we're looking at one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve feet. Twelve feet away. That's strictly GPS accuracy, all right? I'll tell you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pop in one more battery, turn the sensors on. I'm just gonna go straight out and we're gonna do a return to home precision test and that'll be the final of this video. Okay guys, we're at it again. Got a brand new battery in there. Just let it cool down for about five minutes. We're gonna go into the settings and if you guys wanted to know how to turn off your sensors let's do it so we got our safety screen here yeah look at that altitude i think i made it go up because i was going to try to fly out to molokini island the other night when we were camping <laughs> but i never did because it was too dark so i'm going to get that back down to 98 feet obstacle detection a pass okay so now since we have those uh sensors on there all the obstacle detection you see how up on the top the sensors are in white on the top right they used to be in red wow the wind's back look at that flag it's got to be going up there again on the wind so i'm just going to do an auto takeoff let's just watch it do its thing wow so that was interesting because it launched and then when it was about there halfway to where it is now then it said the home point has been updated. I don't want that, right? We want to hear that when we're, just when we're launching. So let's come back down. I'm going to reset this thing right here. And uh, let's try this. Let's try just a manual launch and see if we hear that home point updated. Take off. Listening. Yeah, that was really strange. I mean, if it was logging the point over there, that's not right, is it? I'm going to slowly push up. <laughs> yes. So it says the home point has been updated when it's like already a ways off. So maybe the wind does screw this thing up on its uh, takeoff. Anyway, let's just keep going up. Again, trying to make it, give it the benefit of the doubt. Remember on its return to home? Let's just get up there to another 30 feet. Let it sit there for 10 seconds because apparently some people believe that's what you got to do with this one. And there's the flag. That's how windy it is here. I don't know if you can see my shirt down there in the video too. But uh, yeah, there's some wind. Maybe my shorts, my shirt. That flag's a great indicator though. Thanks for... Um, 
requesting that guys it's a really good request you guys had a little tip so remember I have the uh, the home launch pad switch flipped over from the orange and white now it's the black and the uh, orange so you know maybe we'll have more contrast on this green grass so all I'm gonna do on this one is fly directly out that way up and then out don't want to get going over too many people boy you can really hear that hauling so as long as we're like a couple hundred feet away the return to home point should work no problem so we're just gonna go up I don't want to be anybody's really audio range too much you know if they're trying to enjoy the park we'll go up to 200 feet we'll stop right here okay and let's just press return to home right here holding in return to home button on the controller and we hear the audio I turned up the volume I had it a little lower in that last flight just want to make sure I'm recording yeah we are recording guys I'm not gonna to touch anything I'm just gonna let it do its thing I'm gonna stand back where I was so my shadow and all that stuff doesn't throw it off. Ooh, we got a strong wind warning. Landing. So it's doing this all on its own. It's adjusting. Remember, we're in HDR for this flight. But it'll be cool for you guys to tell me what you think about the difference between the HDR and the uh, 4K 60 frames per second, both in 4K. There's a skate park. So I'm just looking at it at that home pad, landing pad, and just really want to see really how close. This is going to be the second chance. One was without sensors, 12 feet with all the sensors on. Will it adjust? Remember, we launched right in the middle of that hexagon. Hey, it looks like it's going to be a lot better, man. Heck yeah. Only a couple inches off that time, right? So where will the difference, you know, make sure you do an IMU adjustment, make sure you do a compass cal in like a area like this away from metal objects and make sure you have all those sensors on. Some of you actually viewers have, have mentioned that you tested it where you flew around. Let me just turn off this video. The longer you flew around and then tried to do a return to home, the farther it was off. So that could be the case on the precision. Maybe you're flying around and really just like, you know, it's doing too much stuff and it kind of loses track. Maybe its sensors get a little out of whack. And then when you try to do the return to home, it might make it a little more off. So, and that seemed to be the case in this one. That's the best I've ever had on this. And all it was was a fly out and a fly back for a couple minutes. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that high wind test. Uh, again, there is our wind indicator. I mean, there we go, look. That's what the motor's not even on. And here we are back to uh, about probably 25 right now. Up there, definitely about 30, maybe even 35 at times. I know when I was flying over that way, there was some major gusts and it went down to like five miles per hour for a second. So it must have been blasting over there. Anyway guys, again, thanks for watching. Uh, Mavic Air 2 down in the description down below. My other videos up there on the top right. You'll have seen those pop-ups popping up so you can watch the series and the other videos. And those will also be in the description as well as all the gear I use in my videos as usual. And again, hope you enjoyed that test and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Yeah.